In this video, we're going to focus on how we can create arbitrary lines in a scatter chart. So as you can see here, we have this line starting from here, going all the way way down here and then this one in the opposite direction and of course we can create any direction we want so let's start to explore how to do this so let's start to look how to add arbitrary lines on a scatter chart in chart.js first thing what we need is we need to get the default code which you can find on chart.js tree.com getting started and this link is also in the description box scroll down and then just copy this entire chunk of code here if you want to understand what this code does, make sure you watch this video here. So then I'm going to paste this all in there and then cut out this and then put that title nicely in here. Save, refresh. There we are. So now we have this, but of course what I want is a scatter chart. So I'm going to build a quick scatter chart here. First of all, I'm going to convert this, say scatter. And then here I want to add up the value. So instead of the default data, I'm going to say data bracket and then here curly braces x and then here put in the value let's say three and y equals three as well and then comma i'm going to copy this paste one two three four five six i think we have here six or seven items that should be more than sufficient so i'm going to say three this will be six this will be nine and this will be three again and then this will be six and nine and three and then what i want to do here this is all three and then here we have all six here we have nine. Save, refresh. All right, so we get an error. So let's see what's the error. Uh, uncut the item here or this one here. That's all right. So make sure you have a comma or else you get a, a chain or an error like that. So now we have this. And what I want to do now is start to put in a nice arbitrary line in here. And with a scatter chart, it's really fun because, of course, with scatter chart, you can even do, you can do all kind of unique the matrix chart types where you can put in like squares and every square has a separate color etc or something else like that anyway for now i want to work with matrix or quadrant structures so we're just going to make it a simple line so there's a comma here and then we'll say plugins and then what i want to do here is the following i'm going to say here this is a scatter arbitrary line all right make sure you spell it correctly Copy this name, because this is basically the object, and then in here I'm going to say this, plugin block. This is a new plugin, and it was a constant scatter arbitrary line, equals, or sorry, equal, and then pretty basis. Then I'm going to say ID, although I won't be using anything of the ID, so we can you can skip that if you want, doesn't matter. I like to put it in there just in case. Then what I want to do here is, I'm going to ask ourselves, when would we, when would we like to draw the lines? Well, if you want to have the arbitrary line, you want to draw them most likely after we have drawn these grid lines here. But that is before, that would mean before the data sets. So, because basically how it works, skills and grid lines are drawn first, and then the data sets, and finally the tooltip. The tooltip is in the top layer of the Z index. So that's why it's always the most visible. So what I want to do is before the data set, I'm going to draw this. So I'm going to say here, before data sets with an s draw and then in here i'm going to put in charge we can say arcs and we can say your plugin options again the last two i will not be using similar with the id because those are all connected to each other so i won't be using that but i need the chart object that's for me very very important so what i'm going to do now is what we call a data a object destructuring so this object here will be uh, split out because it has many object values and I want to use the shorthand of it. So for example, if I need to get chart.ctx, that's a one of them. I don't want to use this. It's too redundant. I want to remove it and just say ctx. To do that, I must use data, uh, sorry, uh, object destructuring. So I'm going to say constant and then curly braces equal chart is equals chart and then here ctx and then what I'm going to use here more is besides CTX, we have the chart area, so we can start to draw the items. And then we have the scales as well. And I guess maybe chart area won't be even necessary. I will just skip that one for now, the two scales. Although chart area can be useful, I will just add it up. And the reason why is chart area can give us uh, nice straight lines, while the scales will give us lines based on whatever the values are. So I'm going to say here as well, chart area. And let's say a top, bottom, left, 
right width and height. So I won't be using this much and if you want to understand what the chart area is, I'm going to recommend you a specific video at the very end, but it's called the Understanding Chart Area in Chart.js. Very, very powerful tool to understand because you can do a lot of things with uh, plugging with it. So then now we have this here. I'm going to say a CTX dot. And what I'm going to do here is first of all, save all the upper values and then enter here and I'm going to start drawing item. To draw an item, first of all, we're going to draw a line. I'm going to say ctx.begin path to say this is the begin of this line, or more specifically, the shape, so that no other shape would be impacted by this. This is very important to understand because sometimes you have these other lines or some other item, and if you don't do this, what will happen is it will impact them. And I'm going to show you later on exactly what I'm talking about. So then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, here, let's give it a color, so ctx. I'm going to make this a red line. So I'm going to grab here the upper color. This one here, the borderline, that's number, the first one is red. And then I'm going to say here, line, uh, no, not line style, it's stroke style. And think about a canvas. If we talk about canvas, we're basically talking about a painting. So when you use a brush or a paintbrush and you make a line with your paintbrush, we call it a paintbrush stroke. So that's why we have here stroke as a line. It's basically just in the same term or jargon of painters. So we're going to make this here, we have this here. Say here, what is the color of this paintbrush stroke? Well, it is in this case, oh, make sure we have this all correctly. I have too many additional quotations. So here, same quotation here, it's a string value, and then this is the color. So once we have this, I'm going to say CTX, and then they say line width, and the line width can be anything you want, but I want to give it a thick line of three pixels. So once I have this, I can now start to define the starting point. What I want to do is I want to make a diagonal line starting from here all the way to there. So if you see our X and Y values, our X value is three and our uh, Y value starts at zero. And if we go here, we have here nine and nine. So that one is easy. This one is slightly tricky. All right, so we're going to take a CTX dot, then move to, it's capital T, then here is basically X and Y value. So what I need here, is not only the x and y, I need the value here, and that's converted into pixels. That's basically what we're doing here. So I'm going to say here x, and that's why we have this value of scales, because we're not allowed to use this variable, or like this numbers like this, because we have this here as well, so it will overlap. So this must have a, a name, but in this case, it is the x dot, and we're going to use a special command that's built in, in charge.js, which is basically say, get the pixel for value and then what the value will be well in this case we're going to do x value is number three so basically it just says can you get from this specific value number three on the x-axis the pixel uh, ver value of it so it will convert this item into a pixel and that's the x so you can imagine what are we doing for y is exactly the same except for the y instead of three we say zero because it starts at zero so the move to is just a starting point. It doesn't draw anything yet. It doesn't even define a line yet. It just say, all right, so this is the coordinate you want to start with. And then I want to go here. So now I'm going to say a ctx.line to, and that is the drawing of the line. Although it's the preparation of drawing of the line because the line will not be drawn after this. And I'm going to show you exactly why. So we have this here, and I'm going to say here, the value is nine by nine. Of course, it could be any other value. And if your chart has different values, you can put in any value you want. If I refresh here, nothing is going to draw. Why? We didn't indicate to draw yet. We have prepared the line. Basically, there's an imaginary line from one side to another side. And now I'm going to say ctx.stroke to draw that specific line. If I save this, refresh, there we are. So now we have this line here. So this is all fine. And then what I want to do here is I want to say ctx.close path. And the reason why we're doing that is to avoid that Ever we create a new shape, it will not impact whatever is here. So we do this, all right, nothing happens here, of course, it just closes it. And then I'm going to say here finally, ctx.restore. And the restore here is to undo all color and settings, if ever. So now we have this here. So if I would remove this begin path, restore, and close path, we might impact here items. As you can see here, what is happening now, we get these lines here, and we get or this here at the bottom. 
So the reason why is because the scales are still being drawn, because we're drawn before the data set. So what happens is the scales are drawn, and at the same time it draws this line. And this is why we need to make sure that nothing bleeds or leaks to any other item. This is why we're using this here, the restore and the close and begin path. Save, refresh, here we are. All right, so now we have this, and this should be a very self-explanatory. What I want to do now is, imagine you have multiple lines, you could copy and paste this, but I don't want that, I want a professional way. So what I'm going to do here is, I'm going to say here a function, let's say a function lines. I'm going to copy all of this, or cut that out, put it in there. There we are. And then what I want to do is, I want to say here, basically here we want to have a, because you can see here, this is the x value, which is the starting, and this is the x value ending. Same here, starting y, ending y. So I say, x start, and then x end, comma, and then we say here, y start, comma, y end. So these are the numbers now. If I save this, of course, nothing happens at all. We didn't, we didn't define anything yet, and it doesn't trigger anything. So if I say here now, the lines, if I just do the lines here, and I say here, 3, comma, and then we have the ending. There's a 3 is start, 9 is ending, comma, and then for the y, 0, comma, 9. And then what I want to do here is x as uh, starting of the, or ending of the x, which is the, ver the horizontal. And here, y start, y end. If I save this now, refresh, there we are. So what we could do now is, for example, from here to there, another one, which is, this is here, 9 by 3, or 3 by 9. So let's copy this. I'm going to make another one, and I'll say 9 on the starting of the x over y. And what is the starting is 3. And then I want to go here. So that will mean 9 on the x. That's 3 and 9. That's This one's correct. 9 is starting point, but here, it goes from there, it goes down to the bottom. And the bottom here is not 9. 9 is for the x value, but what is the y value? 0, as you can see here. So it's a 0. Center column and center column here. Save this. Refresh. There we are. So now we have this here. And of course, you might say, well, I don't want this color. So we can say your color. If I would copy here now something else, let's say you have this one comma here, and then I'm going to grab the green color here, the fourth value, comma, put in there, and I'm going to say here, color, save, refresh. Oh, let's see, color is not defined, all right, and the reason why is we have this color here, but I didn't put the parameter here, so it's a color here, save. There we are, and that's how we do it, and we can do even more, we could even say a top and bottom, or, or if, if we change this to top, Let's see what happens. It moves you to the top, and of course, it, it's it's a long story. It's slightly related to top here. This should be left. But if I would say here right, what happens? You probably will get it all here, as you can see. So anyway, but that's the chart area. I'm going to recommend you a specific video for that. But this is basically how. Let's undo this all. Save, refresh. There we are. And this is basically how we can start to create our arbitrary lines in a scatter chart. If you want to understand the chart area that we have in here, I'm going to recommend you this because there's so much more you can do, background colors, etc., etc. And so I'm going to recommend you understanding chart area in chart.js as a video to watch as well.